kind of a mythical thing. But right, sure. hey, whatever brings people to town, spends their money on gas and and buying trinkets and whatever, uh, we're just glad to have them in town. George Washington came and surveyed that area, and legend says he called it a pleasant point. Yeah. So somehow it got turned around to Point Pleasant. People used to go by, through, go through West Virginia and not stop. They are missing the hidden gem of the East. I'm up front with everybody. I will not promise anybody anything, but I'll say I'll do the best I can to do what you would like for me to do, okay. uh, as long as it's reasonable. There's something weird happening in Mason County, West Virginia. Well, it may not be that weird today, but it was. Today, all that's there is the Mothman statue. That's a giant stainless steel statue with piercing red eyes. But back in 1967, Morgan County residents told of being scared off by a giant, well, Mothman, you know, half man, half moth, who chased them out of the site of a former TNT factory. Welcome to The Good Government Show. I'm your host, Dave Martin. On this episode, we're going to meet Rick Hanley, and he's a county commissioner in Mason County, West Virginia. While the Mothman may not actually exist... Well, at least there haven't been any sightings since the 60s. It does bring tourists, and as Rick will explain, tourism is a new driving force in West Virginia. There's also more good news in Mason County as they're getting a new steel plant that's going to be environmentally friendly and provide hundreds of new jobs. So listen to Mason County Commissioner Rick Hanley talk about being in the Guinness Book of World Records and how being a basketball coach helped him be a better county commissioner. The Good Government Show is sponsored by OurCo. That means our community. OurCo has found a way to make government more effective. OurCo provides the OUR platform, and this is an app that blends in-person and digital interactions to connect people with their government, their county, their town, their state. The OurCo app transforms meaningful conversations into reliable data. They can turn results into projects and programs the community has essentially already approved. It's sort of like a flash poll by phone, but without the call and in real time and wherever community members are. Maybe they're at their house or their office or uh, where they're out just talking about local issues. Uh, Maybe the choice is between putting in more local buses or expanding the bike lanes. ARCO can get you an answer immediately. With OUR, you can engage your citizens or any group. Learn what they want and build programs and policies that advance your county, your job creators, your constituents. So visit OURCO.com, that's O-U-R-C-O.com, and learn how they do it and while you're there, book a demonstration. Welcome to the Good Government Show. We are here in West Virginia at the Rural Action Caucus, thank you, uh, at the Greenbrier Resort in uh, in uh, White Sulphur Springs in West Virginia. I'm always fascinated by all things West Virginia, and we have a, a West Virginia County Commissioner. Introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from. Uh, tell us your county. I am Rick Hanley, I'm Mason County Commissioner. This is my 27th year, and Mason County is right on the border uh, along the Ohio River. So I am. I have took my first trip to West Virginia a couple of years ago. And I am fascinated by the state, had never been here. I'm learning a lot about the the diversity that is West Virginia. Tell me a little bit about uh, Mason County. What are you famous for? What's going on there? Well, Mason County uh, is known for its agriculture. And it's also known for its uh, chemical plants. And also we have a power plant that's supplied by coal. And what? tell me about the Mothman. Mothman is a creature that uh, a couple people saw back in the uh, 1967 up in an area known as the TNT area where they used to make, obviously, TNT for uh, World War II. Okay. And once they closed that down, a lot of strange things has happened in that area where the Mothman was located. Uh, But uh, So what is the Mothman? Well, well, the Mothman is it's a creature that if you if you go look uh, Google Mothman and you're going to see a, a, a large wing uh, basically uh, a seven eight foot wingspan he had red eyes according to those who actually saw him and uh, there are people that claim they actually saw him yes he chased their car out of the TNT area <laughs> and do people tend to believe that? Well, we have a Mothman statue in town. Okay. Uh, if so you, you've you, embraced the crazy? We Yes. We have a, a gentleman who is now passed, but he has a stainless steel statue of the Mothman, as, yes. as people had told him what it looked like. And we have people coming there every day of the year, 
probably a couple thousand a week. We also have a Mothman Festival uh, the third weekend in September. What happens we'll have at the any, festival? We'll have anywhere from 15 to 20,000, 25,000 people in our small town of 5,000 people. To come and to the Mothman Festival. Come to the Mothman Festival. We have speakers who right. talk about paranormal. <laughs> okay. We have a lot of paranormal people coming from uh, all over the country and even uh, I'm sorry, did other you say countries. Abnormal? Paranormal. Oh, sorry. Paranormal. Okay. Uh, some people think they're abnormal, right. but they're paranormal, and they just get a, a kick uh, about other you know, mythical monsters. We also have the. Uh, there's a museum for this. There's a museum. Yes, and how, how owned by Jeff Walmsley. Oh, it, it's it's wildly po- uh, popular among uh, people who come here for every day of the year. Even right. Christmas Day, they'll be here every day of the year. <laughs> yes, to see the Mothman. Yes, sir. And what was the last? Uh, when was the most recent sighting? When was the first sighting? Oh, <laughs> nineteen sixty-eight. They, they at the same time. Oh well, people haven't really seen him since. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of a mythical thing. But I see. hey, whatever brings people to town, <laughs> spends their money on gas and and buying trinkets and whatever. Uh, we're just glad to have them in town. So once they hit town, uh, what do they see? What's there? Uh, the Mothman statue. Right. Everybody has to have their picture of the Mothman statue. And I'm, well, I, my wife has a, a business on Main Street. She's an attorney. We always go to a place called the Coffee Grinder yeah. uh, on 4th and, and Main. And right there is where the Mothman statue is. Well, you go out there and you'll have mom taking a picture of dad and the kids. Or you'll have dad taking a picture of mom and the kids. So my job is to, you all get together and I'll take your picture all together. So <laughs> now, I enjoy that. Job is oh, all encompassing. I, I enjoy that on my way to the coffee grinder and back to the office. Okay, what town is this? In? this Point, is Point Pleasant. Point Pleasant. And that's the, is that the county seat from Morgan County? county uh, Mason County. Mason yes, County. Yes, Sorry, yes, Mason it is. County. Yes. It's where the Kanawha River empties into the Ohio River. Uh, George Washington came and surveyed that area, and legend says he called it a Pleasant Point. Yeah. So somehow it got turned around to Point Pleasant. Point Pleasant. It's also the first battle of the American Revolution. Uh, Lexington and Concord Lex- have nothing well, on now, you. Hang on now. Man. <laughs> Next year will be the 250th anniversary. Lexington and Concord was actually fought between the British and the colonists. Right. In Point Pleasant, the battle was fought between the colonists and the Indians who were being agitated and supported by whom? The British. The British. Yes. So we lay, we lay claim that that was the first battle of the American Revolution. Is there a battlefield there, site or something? Uh, there's a site. There's a, a state park. It's one of the smallest state parks in the state. It's right there at the point. Okay. It's a beautiful, beautiful small park. Really nice uh, obelisk uh, statue, uh, monument, I should say, that's there. So one of the things I've learned about West Virginia is that there is, I think it's fair to say the state is sort of in a massive transition um, from what it was to move into the future. Um, that includes the coal economy, but it includes other uh, aspects. Um, it seems like uh, there's a lot of uh, tourism and outdoor recreation um, that's being promoted in West Virginia. What's going on in your in your county? Well, I'm going to go back to the tourism. Sure. We are now being, you know, people used to go by, through, go through West Virginia. Right. And not stop. They are missing the hidden gem of the East. Okay. Because we have a lot of uh, tourism. We have a lot of uh, beautiful sites. We have rafting. Uh, we have... Um, uh, gosh, we have the we call the the line zip lining. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, zip but, but, but rafting is great. I've, I've rafted several times. I've also zip lined. Uh, uh, hiking is, is great. It's a great place to come. Bring your children. Do a lot of hiking. Uh, but it's got the New River Gorge Bridge, right? And you can walk underneath that bridge on a catwalk, which I've done twice. No, thank you. No, I know. I know. I'm, and I'm scared of heights. My, <laughs> my, my hand prints are still on the rail as we speak. Yeah. But uh, it, it's a great it's a great state for recreation. And is the New just, River Gorge Toucher County? No, okay. no. It's it's about an hour and forty five minutes away. But it's now a national park. It's the newest it's, national. It's park. The newest national park. Yes. And when I was so spoke with Senator Mansion, we we talked a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, have you seen a spillover effect from the from the New River Gorge to your county? Well, anybody who comes through on US nineteen tend yeah. to they, uh, they can obviously come to mason county to see the mothman right <laughs> um so yeah there's we have a lot of people who go from north to south or from east to west and one of the places they stop by is in point pleasant to see the mothman they can stop there and go to the mothman museum grab a bite to eat uh, so one of the local eateries there yeah uh fill up full of gas and take off to the next spot and head out and head to new river gorge yeah there you go um so what challenges do you have? What are you dealing with? What's well, we, we've there? dealt with a lot of unemployment in the past, but now uh, we have 
landed a uh, a great 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 company it's called Nucor. They, it's, it's one of the largest steel making plants in the world um you're gonna make steel they're gonna make steel yes sir they have invest they're gonna be going to invest 3.4 billion not million dave billion. billion dollars into this facility it's right along the river okay and it's also right along a rail line so they're going to have not only uh shipping things in and out by rail but also by by boat uh we're about 15 miles from the nearest uh interstate which we hope that uh our state government will build a a nice four lane to that uh, interstate but it's a it's a steel plant they're going to hire 800 to uh, 900 people um a lot of jobs that's there and we realize that Mason County will not get all those jobs, which is fine because we have Huntington close to us, Ashland, Kentucky. We have uh, Chillicothe, Ohio, which is about 45 minutes away. People are going to uh, drive in to go to those places because we're talking anywhere from ninety to $110,000 uh, average jobs. Okay, that's significant. Yes. Now, my understanding is that, and I researched this a few years ago, there's not much steel being manufactured in America, is there? No, no. And Nucor has a couple of different places that they have plants right now. And this is going to be their newest state of the art. It's going to be run by electricity. No coal was involved, no emissions. Okay, good. Uh, which is a great, great thing for uh, West Virginia because we're known for burning a lot of coal and a lot of the bad emissions that come out. We right. have three. Stripping the tops of mountains. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, wasn't a fan of that either. But yeah. uh we have three power plants that burn coal within probably four miles of each other. Um, Two in Ohio and one in, in Mason County. Okay. My understanding, uh, just going back to the, the steel manufacturing, I think I remember reading or researching this. There was like one steel plant in Pennsylvania just to say there was still a steel plant being made somewhere near the Pittsburgh Steelers. Is that, well, is that well we had that also in uh, in Weirton, West Virginia. Right. Still, uh, still making plant. And uh, yeah, Pittsburgh area is known for their for making the steel. But this is going to be, like I said, uh, uh, we're looking really looking forward to it. They came to our county, Newcore did. Yeah. And we we you know everybody says they're going to come to your county, come to your county, and all this. But they came, and one of the first things they did was give money to a uh, a food. Uh, oh, oh, shoot! Play, people <laughs> give out food. Out, yes. People <laughs> give out food. Okay. Food pantry. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Dave. Thing. Thank sure. you. But they also gave our county board of education a million dollar check. Oh. Well, I knew they were. I knew they were coming when that check didn't bounce. <laughs> and the, the school board took it and, and, and used the money wisely. And okay. uh, they they come to all their, their employees are wonderful. Uh, they're not even. Uh, haven't even they're not even on a roof yet they haven't started actual construction yeah i had groundbreaking a couple of weeks ago and had over 500 shovels it's the it, it's in the court i'm in the guinness book of world records <laughs> Why is that? for every 500 people it's the largest groundbreaking uh, event uh in the history and, that's, and we had guinness book of world records people there, they, in, were there? they were there all right took, yeah okay. took pictures and do you have your shovel? did you keep I, your shovel i have my shovel is at it home. a gold shovel like no a, it's it's a it's your, a dirt shovel but you yeah, know i you, took it home to my wife and i said you're gonna have to use this it, it's a left-handed <laughs> shovel and i'm right-handed did she hit so, you with a shovel? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no it, it's a great thing uh to have in our county um uh, what did you – why did they pick your county? Did you do anything? Were there requirements they were there, looking for? Or? I'll tell you, our, our federal government, you know, Senator Manchin, mm-hmm. Senator Capito, were awesome and, and, get, and helping. Uh, it, all, it all starts with economic development in the, in the country. Okay. And then it comes down to the state. Uh, Governor uh, Justice, uh, who owns this facility, yes. uh, was also instrumental as long as our legislature, they uh, – Changed some laws that made it a little bit easier to, for companies to come in, and uh, along with the county government, which was the county commissioners, we gave them a pilot program. It's a payment in lieu of taxes. Uh, the land that they're on, we were getting probably thirty thousand dollars a year. It was being farmed, so it's only farm use tax uh, as far as on the taxes. So they're they're giving us sixty thousand for the next two years. Um, Payment in lieu of taxes. Double. Okay, and then once they're uh, in operation, they will be giving uh, Mason County one million dollars. What does that mean to Mason County? 
Well, that's a lot of money that you can give out. You can you can build uh, what, what are you, how are you gonna how are you, water you gonna water projects, sewer somebody, projects. Somebody's rubbing their hands together. Yes, and, well, and going like uh, what are we do it here. Everybody's going to want a piece of the money. Sure, but uh, you know we have fire departments to to do EMS to to fund, yeah. libraries to fund. Um, I tell you, we're going to be possibly uh, doing more water projects because people are going to be moving. We hope we have people moving. That's part of our problem, Dave. We don't have enough housing. You know, we couldn't have built houses five years ago because we didn't know new core was coming. Now the new course is coming. You know, we have a couple of years to before uh, the actual uh, startup date as far as producing steel. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we can get someone to build. But it's, it's hard to find people who, a uh, construction company or people who want to build homes to come in and build in your area. Um, are you building single family homes? You're going to build well, whatever, all kinds of. I say it's all. I say it's different. Yes. Yeah. I say it's going to be different to homes. But I would say in the 150 to 250 thousand dollar homes will be probably the the average. Okay. Uh, I would think. What effect is this going to have on the you know public education, on libraries, on well, that's uh, <clears throat> police department, on roads, that sort of thing. You know, along with all of this positive things, there are some things that you got to <laughs> really plan ahead of time. Sure. Uh, yeah, we only have. Uh, one fire department in that end of the county, uh, and that's a we're all volunteer in Mason County, as oh. in as in most uh, West Virginia. There's okay. only probably three or four uh, cities, the large cities that have paid. Okay, uh, we have um, EMS. We have one EMS squad down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of different things we're going to pay for. So because, maybe we have two. <laughs> well, if if you're if you're a uh, school teacher. And you're making, I was a school teacher 35 years, but if you have a school teacher making $40,000, $50,000, you can go down there and, and apply to, to be work in the steel plant for $9,500,000. Who are we going to lose out of the teaching? You have a, you, our deputies making fifty fifty five thousand. 55000 Right. You know, you can go down there and make tw- almost twice as much. So we're, you know, what do we do to, to keep them there instead of going down to the plant? It depends on what you want to do. Right. You know, if you want to be in the law enforcement, that's, we, we, we love our law enforcement people in Mason County, as we do in the state and our country. But uh, there are some problems that will be created by them coming to, not, not, I won't say not problems, but things to deal with, issues to deal with. In my conversation with the county commissioners, I have discovered that many of them um, are teachers. Is there anything about being a teacher that lends itself to being a good county commissioner or a good you know, government official? Well, I was a teach a teacher thirty five years. I was a coach for twenty two years. What you coach? I think I coached uh, girls basketball, boys basketball, okay. junior high, high school right. uh, track. Um, I, as far as my my teaching, uh, I came into teaching back in nineteen seventy four, and I went to elementary teaching because there weren't uh, very many male teachers in the elementary schools. Right, and I think it was very important to do that because uh, you know. Lot, you know, some families didn't have dads in the family. Okay. You know, so, um, but I think that being a teacher and being a uh, a coach, you you know, you have leadership skills that you want to share with okay. your city. I was a city councilman in Point Pleasant for twelve years before I became a county commissioner in in uh, ninety seven. Do you still coach basketball? No, I do not. <laughs> no, I do not. I, I love to watch. I've got a son who plays basketball, so right. I'll be watching him play. Okay. And that's when I actually stopped. I stopped coaching when my yeah. kids became old enough. Oh, they didn't I, want dad to be the coach? Well, <laughs> I, no. I didn't want to be uh, coaching one team while my son's oh, okay. playing, playing another team. Yeah, or my daughter, whomever. Yeah. So, All right. Have any of your, your former students or former players uh, – Come up in city government or county government as well. Yes, I've got a couple. Really? Yes, that are. Yeah, and I really, uh, I really like that. Um, I've got a nephew who's in the city council person in Point Pleasant. Okay. Got a former student who lives right down the block from me who's also a city council person. So, yeah, and I've got a, a lady who is now the city clerk. Yeah. Uh, was temporary mayor. Uh, our other mayor. Uh, Retired, so yeah, she's one of the city clerks in Point Pleasant. Um, yeah, I've got a, a former student who's one of our is our county assessor. Okay, in Mason <laughs> County, so I call them classmates. I don't All call right. them former students. I call them, those are my old classmates. All right, so one on one, you and your son, who's winning? Uh, he's taller than I am now. He you is. Know, but you know what I tell him? He, he's, a, he's a sophomore. He's 6'3". Okay. All right. He's grown quite a bit in the last several years. Um, okay. But I tell him that he may be taller than me, 
He won't be as good looking as I am. <laughs> I have a face for radio, Dave. <laughs> I, I don't comment. No, no Folks, I'm just teasing. Go to the website, check out the pictures, and uh, you decide for yourself. All right. <laughs> so, uh, with all that, um, we're going to get to our, our good government questionnaire, and we're going to get to the heart okay. of your philosophy of government. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right, here we go. I'm ready. All right. Uh, how long have you been a county commissioner now, you said? 27 years. 27 years. Yes, sir. And you were in public school teacher before that? Yeah. Well, uh, there for about, let's see, from 97 to 09, for 12 years I was both. You were both. We're, we're considered, in West Virginia, we're considered part-time. Oh, you are? Okay. Yes. So, from where you sit, to find good government? Good government is when people that are elected uh, listen to the to the, the to their constituents and, and do what's best for uh, the people in your county, people in your town, whatever it might be, sh- uh, showing that uh, you do your homework before you make decisions. You ask around. I, I go to I go to and be seen out in public. I, I go to Walmart. I go to eat lo- in a local. <laughs> I go to church there. Uh, my kids go to school in the county. So you know, being uh, available, being, having access to to people and or, uh, so that you can hear what they have to say. How do you judge your success? How do you know if you're doing a good job? Or how do you know if you're not doing a good job? What do you use as your personal yardstick? I use, uh, as a rule, that I have been elected five times. And nobody in my county has been elected more than two times. Right. So I've been elected five consecutive Maybe terms. Maybe they're just afraid you're going to make them run. Well, <laughs> yeah, I've had a, uh, former <laughs> classmates tell me that, and athletes. But, yeah, yeah I, I just... Uh, Figure that if I'm doing a good job, I'll get reelected. If I'm not, then they'll put someone else in. And what about in between elections? That's every four years. What about in between? It's every six years. Every six years, even worse. Yeah. Uh, what about in between? How do you uh, judge uh, your success? Uh, well, I, I tell you what, as a county commissioner, we have three county commissioners on every uh, commission, except for Berkeley and Jefferson. They have five. Okay. Um, but I don't do anything. It's three, it's we. Okay. You know, we do things for our county, and uh, we all work together. I don't care whether it's an R after your name, a D after your name, or an I. I've never been on a county kind of commission in my tw- in my five terms where we decide anything based upon politics. That's what I like about county government. All right. Um, if the citizens, if the voters, if your you know the residents, if they feel like they're not getting good government. Um, what should they do? Attend meetings and find out. Was that that's a, that's an issue? We don't have many people come to our meetings unless they want to complain about something. See, I think it goes back to you're going to make them run. Yeah. <laughs> now, Dave. Back. Now, Dave. <laughs> Give me twenty. <laughs> you're uh, a coach. It's it's you can't you can't shake that kind of thing. I, I, I know you're right. Uh, you're right. You're uh, right. Um, and I still have certain students say, "You made us ride, run up and down the court." Some of that, but you know, but, that's why you're playing basketball. You right, know, it's not right. a snow race. Nope. So, um, get back to your question again. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if they don't feel like they're getting what they want, what should well, they? Well, yeah, do? come to attend meetings. Okay. You know, be involved. Uh, talk to someone. Talk to me. Talk to the other two county commissioners. Uh, come to a meeting and tell us why you think something should be changed, or we should be doing something about whatever. We have an economic development uh, director and a, and a, an authority in town. We have a, a different boards that people can help take. You know, it's hard to find play people to serve on boards because that's you know you always have to make a decision. And when you make a decision, you either make people mad or you make them. Mad <laughs> when you make a decision. So you make them mad or you make them mad? Mad or glad, one uh-huh. of the two. All right, okay. Um, you've been at this, you said, for 26 years? Yes, 27. Uh, 27, yes. 27, sorry. That's all You're right. A, uh, so that makes you sort of a political insider. What would you like people to know about how government works or doesn't work? I like the, pe- I like the people in Mason County to know that we are up front with anybody who comes through the door to our meetings. I'm up front with everybody. I will not promise anybody anything, but I'll say I'll do the best I can to do what you would like for me to do. Okay. Uh, as long as it's reasonable. Now, if I get, uh, you know, something asked, someone asked me to do something, and someone else asked me to do just the opposite, I got to weigh both issues and see yeah. which side I want to want to lean towards. But I, I I try to do my homework before I make decisions. So it's, as a teacher, yeah, <laughs> make it homework. Do your homework. Then. Yes. Well done. Um, so, so just uh, know that you know that you're open. 
Know I'm very, I'm, I'm always open. My phone number's in the phone book. I give people my cell phone. I've been called on vacation so many times, but but I do carry my phone no matter where I go. How does that go over at home? Uh, not bad. People, right. you know, yeah, my wife understands, and All people, right. under, you know, people, my my kids understand that if if Dad needs a phone call because of something in Mason County, yeah, I'll take the phone call. All right. Now, if I'm eating with my family. It can be turned off. Right. Uh, on vacation, I had the superintendent of schools call me four years ago, and yeah. I'm I'm laid on the beach in Jamaica, <laughs> and there's background music of you know beach music. Sure. And he calls and says, "Rick, would you a red stripe or a love Drake?" <laughs> That's it. There you go. You've been there. <laughs> yes, I have. And uh, he said, "Rick, would you like to be on a comprehensive facilities plan for the school system?" No, I'm a retired school teacher and still care about the school system. I said, yeah, yeah. He's, he, was, he was also a coach with me in okay. track. I said, yeah, coach, I'll be glad to. He said, Rick, I hear music in the background. Where are you? I said, coach, I'm in Jamaica. <laughs> he started apologizing and saying, oh, I didn't mean to bother you. I said, nope, my, I've got my phone with me wherever I'm at. All right. Um, who's your political hero? Who do you look up to? Who inspired you? Uh, my Who dad. Inspires you? My dad was a city council person in Point Pleasant back okay. in the '60s. All right. So uh, I was, uh, which led me to uh, that. But also, I was a, a president, a junior, a president of my junior class in high school, president of uh, uh, what we called it, what we called a key club back then. Right. Uh, the captain of the basketball team, co-captain. So I've had some leadership roles, but. Um, Ken Heckler was a was a, an older uh, congressman from West Virginia okay. back in the late 60s, and I went to Washington, D.C. on a contest that he had and just loved uh, the way that he handled himself uh, in, in Congress. So uh, maybe it was you know Ken Heckler. Did you dream of being president or oh, no, governor or no, senator no, no. or any of that stuff? No, no, no. That's, uh, well, I mean, it sounds like you had some leadership and some, like, you know, kid political training uh, when you were younger. I, I I did, but I don't want to be at home. Yeah, I want I don't want to be in Charleston, West Virginia, in the legislature. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, I got accused at one time of creating a single district, uh, single delegate district in Mason County, so we could have our own House, house of Delegate member. Okay. Uh, we didn't have one for a while, and then, uh, but. I had no intention of going to Charleston. House of Delegates is the uh, House of Representatives. It's yes, the lower uh, house yes. of the state of West Virginia, yes. right? Yes, and you'd be in Charleston. Are there any other House of Delegates in either states, or is West Virginia the only one? Uh, we have House of Delegates, and we have a state senate. No, no, no. Uh, I, is, and other, other are there states. any other states with House of Delegates? I really don't know. I don't think so. It's, uh, I think it's unique. But. Yeah. Um, so, as I said, I am fascinated by all things West Virginia. This is my uh, second trip here to the state. I am coming to Mason County. What's a great local dish? What are we going? What are we having? What are, you, what are we eating? Well, we, uh, we there's a place in town called the Village Pizza. Village Pizza. I'm from Brooklyn. You want to stock pizza? No, I, no, well, no, no listen. I <laughs> bet listening. they don't serve the type of pizza that we have. Okay. Or the, or the kind. You don't put if pineapple you went, on it or something, do you? No. Good. This is a Mothman pizza. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. We don't have that in Brooklyn. Yeah. We, uh, we have the coffee grinder. We have quite a, few, a couple of different places. But the coffee grinder is where we go. My wife and I go eat about every day. What's the sandwiches? What's a, what's, a, what's a good regional? What's a good dish? What's a good regional oh, I, dish for I, you? I love their... Um, stuffed pepper soup. Stuffed pepper I, I soup. love stuffed peppers, yes. Okay. But I love stuffed pepper soup. I, Anything I, I unique to West potatoes. Virginia? Unique oh, to that region? well, pepper, uh, pepper, pepperoni rolls is what a lot of people eat. But honestly, Dave, I, I'm not a big pepperoni roll eater. <laughs> You're not. Okay. Well, yeah. listen, it's called The Good Government Show, and so we always try to bring it back to good government. Give me an example of a good government project you've been working on or have worked on in the past. Well, we have a government project. I'm going to tell you one that may not be what you're looking for. Well, I'm but looking for we, good we, government. They were building a, uh, finishing a road, 14.6 miles. Okay. We had one end of Route 35 finished, and we had the other end finished, but we had, but we had a 14.6 miles that was not finished. Okay. So they wanted to toll our road. I say they, the legislature wanted to toll our road. Yeah. So uh, part of the bill said that, uh, whatever counties the road goes through, both county commissioners must approve it. Well, Putnam County commissioners voted 3 0 to just hold it. Mason County commissioners voted 2 to 1 to toll it. And then one of the guys who, General one of my commissioners who uh, voted to toll it, come back to me and said, we got, I want to meet again because I made a mistake. 
So we had another vote. Okay. He voted not to toll it like I did. So they did not toll that road. Now, it took us several years to get that road finished because I think <laughs> they probably kind of held it against us for, for okay. But part of that bill too, Dave, which I, we didn't like, was every two years they were going to uh, up the the toll, oh. the amount the toll was going to be. You ever been through West Virginia as far as the toll, the toll, the turnpike? I don't recall. I mean, okay, I the turnpike, you would know if you come up to a, to a the toll I did not booth, go through a toll booth. It's four four dollars and twenty five cents, and we have three of those on West Virginia. So our thinking was, I take the Verrazano once a week. Between okay, Brooklyn, Staten Island, that's like eleven fifty. So you have. Uh, I laugh at your four dollar toll. Well, <laughs> it, I'm not sure what it would be right now. Yeah. I mean, in, in Point Pleasant, because they were starting out at two, and every two years they were going to increase it. So we were against that also. So right now we have a, a brand new, well, it's about a year and a half now, a, to, a road in Mason County. That goes from Charleston to, to Point Pleasant. Yeah. Uh, cut off about ten minutes drive, and there's no toll. All right. So when you come into West Virginia from the north, you're not paying a toll until you get to Charleston. Now our thing was you're going to be get told before that you're going to get told before when you come in, and you're going to get told when you leave. Why would someone want to come through your your state? They'll so, go around it. So drivers can pass through your town without having to uh, to get told. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Rick Hanley, it has uh, been a pleasure speaking with you and meeting you uh, in uh, Mason County, and uh, I uh, hope to see the Mothman Museum someday. You come down and let me know that <laughs> you got my card. I do. Let I me do. know when you're in town. We'll take you down a coffee grinder, All right. and I'll show you the Mothman's shiny hiney. And uh, can we can we go up to like where those, the places where he's been spotted and see if we could, you know, we can go to the TNT area. All right, we we'll, sure we'll, can. We'll go look for the off man. Uh, Rick Hanley, thanks for coming by. Dave's been Appreciate a your time. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. What is it the county government does? That's the question county commissioners get asked the most, and the simple answer is everything. On The Good Government Show, we're so lucky to have talked with so many county commissioners and other county officials that have shown us how effective county government is. County government dates back to, get this, 1634, making it one of the oldest forms of government in the United States. Think about it. Roads, highways, hospitals, schools, recycling, law enforcement, water, sewers, and most of the county, those services are maintained by the county, that's county government. The National Association of Counties represents all 3,069 counties across the USA. NACO helps county government work better together through things like sharing best practices. When county government works well, well, that's just good government. Add that to the list. The Mothman Festival, just another West Virginia attraction that's helping change the state diversify from a majority coal economy. Add Commissioner Hanley to the list of former teachers turned elected officials. But there are good things happening throughout West Virginia, and I continue to be impressed by a state that continues to surprise me, and I hope you too. Well, that's our show. Thanks for listening. Please like us and share us with your friends and review us right here where you're listening. And check out our website, goodgovernmentshow.com for extras. Join us again for another episode of The Good Government Show. And if you like what we're doing here at The Good Government Show, check out our friends at the How to Really Run a City podcast. It's hosted by a couple of smart, hilarious, and outspoken former two-term mayors, Atlanta's Kasim Reed and Philadelphia's Mayor Michael Nutter. Each episode features a different A-list guest sharing their secrets about how to really get stuff done in the urban laboratories we call cities. Check out How to Really Run a City, brought to you by the nonprofit Philadelphia Citizen and co-hosted by award-winning journalist and author Larry Platt, wherever you get your podcasts and at the philadelphiacitizen.org slash podcasts. So thanks for listening. I'm Dave Martin. This is The Good Government Show. The Good Government Show is a Valley Park production. Jim Ludlow, Dave Martin, that's me, and David Snyder are the executive producers. Our show is edited and produced by Jason Stershik. Please subscribe, then share us, and like us, and review us. That's the best way to make sure we're able to keep telling these stories of our government working for all of us. Then listen to the next episode of The Good Government Show. Good Government Show.